Hey guys, uh, I'm back. Now, I know what you're thinking. Cucumber, did you really fuck off for three months just to come back with another M3 video? Yes, I did. Uh, but this is not the average M3 video. I'm not gonna go over the history because I've already done that. Although, I do need to remake that video, but that'll be later. Um, today, I actually have something I've been looking for for a while. Uh, is actually a size large M3 1016 Army Lightweight Service Mask. Uh, you can see in the background I have my size universal. It may look a little different from last time because I actually swapped out the hose that was on it. Originally this had a neoprene M3 hose that was really deformed. So uh, I took a natural rubber M3 hose off of another mask and just swapped the hoses so I could have a good example. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Uh, actually, I found this in a listing on eBay. It was supposed to come with an M7 carrier. Uh, originally, this was in terrible condition. Um, another story of me uh, restoring the mask again, just like with the M4 lightweight. Just like with the M4 though, I'm gonna have it sent off to gas mask bunker for uh, head harness tab replacement, uh, but that'll be at a later date. I just did the main stuff like replacing hardware. I had to replace the eye lenses as well as the lens frame, as well as the uh, valve seat. But I did retain the original XL valve itself. Um, this mask is a mixture of parts from General, DRCO, and IRGC. If I remember correctly, IRGC is... Okay, I don't remember what IRGC stands for, but I know DRCO is dried and rubber company, obviously. Um, and then the face piece itself is actually made by General, which was kind of surprising because I, I was always under the assumption that a cushionet was the main one to produce these um, sort of out-of-pocket unique designs like the super smalls. You'll always see them made by a cushionet. Um, what's another example? The post-war special purpose masks, those will be made by a cushionet as well. Uh, I just, it was kind of a shock to me when I saw that this was a General face piece. I, uh, <laughs> oh, that's another thing. I moved into an apartment and right here is a large glass door so I could see people pass and every now and then someone will pass and stare directly at me while I'm making a video. So that's kind of interesting. But yeah, anywho, um, I guess I could show off the size marking. Oh, I didn't even finish with the story, Jesus Christ. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this was supposed to come with an M7 carrier. As you know, the M7 carrier is meant for the M5 assault mask, but I reached out to the seller. I was like, hey, could you send me a picture of the forehead? Because it, just from the photo, you can kind of tell it was larger than a regular M3. So like, oh, I bet that's a large. And sure enough, it it is indeed a large. Um, you can see the large marking on the forehead instead of the standard U for Universal. Um, it was like, look, you could probably make a hundred bucks with a carrier alone, which was kind of a lie. Uh, but I was like, so I'll give you 50 bucks for the mask just because of its current condition. And again, this mask was trashed. So 50 bucks was probably more than generous and the seller agreed. So he sold me the mask separately. I got the mask, um, obviously in terrible condition. I disassembled it, cleaned it and put it all back together. Um, now I did have to find another feral. I actually sacrificed my M4 lightweight for the whole feral, but you know, it is what it is. I couldn't find the spare one I had for some reason. Um, but the face piece, nose cup and a hose are all original to the mask. Oh, and the actual XL valve itself. This filter, I just kind of copped from, oh, actually this filter actually originally belonged to this mask, but I took it off because, uh, I think it was something along the lines of it smelled really weird when I wore it, so I wanted a good mask to wear for a permeable gear. So I just swapped out the filter on this mask with a another M1021 canister. Um, you see this one's missing the inlet valve. That's because I actually jacked the inlet valve out of this one and put it onto another M1021 canister. It's just, I, I'll eventually get it, either a good M1021 canister for this mask or an inlet valve. I don't know, when, whichever comes first, I guess. But uh, yeah, so, now, getting right into this, uh, the size large, when I first opened this mask, I was actually really surprised because uh, it's not your typical M3 nose cup as you'd usually see. Usually the uh, nose cup for the M3 will actually have an extra bit of rubber, I guess you could call it, kind of vulcanized to the cheeks on either side. 
but this is just free floating in the face piece and is actually held open by a spring wire right there. Um, and it's also kind of a different mold. Also too, you can see the bait stamp. Uh, the, the nose cup was made in, let's see. Fuck, I can't. May of 1944 by Dryden Rubber Company. Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, and like I said, it wasn't glued in at all. It was just held in by the being folded over this part of the mask right here. And then with the exhale valve holding it all together. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, another thing that I could add to is this is uh, basically, you notice how the general face pieces has this, uh, the mold seam where the injection mold actually like comes together to form the mask. You can see it has that uh, sort of circular thing around the islands. Is that, stand, that stays the same on universal mask. Um, what they did with this is just completely upsize the face piece and that's how you get a large. I don't know what man in the 1940s would need this, but yeah, they made them and they had them. Uh, not sure of the number of size larges they actually had. Same thing with the size super small, super small M3s do exist they did procure some but other than that it is a m3 lightweight service mask um and i guess i could just put it next to the m3 or the universal m3 so you can see how actually massive this thing is so yeah there it is next to the m3 or the universal size i do want to get a size super small just to complete the set but those are probably just as hard to find as the size large. So just uh, something else to add to the uh, sizing of the M3 lightweight. And this also carried over with the M4. I completely forgot to mention that. Um, there were also size large M4s during the war, as well as size super small M4s during the Second World War. Uh, but most commonly you'll find post-war reconfigurations of the M4 where they just took an M2A2 and cut the hose at 18 inches and stuck an M10A1 canister on it. Those will generally be dated around 1955, 1956. But, um, oh, same thing with the largest, large M4s. There are, I found an example of a large M4 that was basically, it, it had the same thing happen to it where they just, it was probably in a, okay, this is where it gets kind of blurry because it's unclear if they actually made size large M2A2s specifically. Um, there's, I'm not getting into it, but uh, I believe that size large M2A2s did exist because the size super small M2A2 definitely existed. So size large M4s exist as well as super small. Um, now uh, with the M3 and the M4, there are also sub sizes of the size universal. I don't know when they started doing this, but around late World War II, uh, the different manufacturers, as you may know, uh, resulted in a bunch of different styles of face pieces. The, way, the best way I can explain this is um, different brands of jeans. You know, you might fit 32 by 34 in a Levi, but a 30 by 34 in polo or some dumb shit like that. I don't know. But you get what I'm saying? The, the different brands uh, sort of had a different size and that was the same thing. You got a Kushnet, General, Goodyear, Firestone, IRGC, Sun Rubber Company. I think they made M3s as well. Uh, you get the point. There are many different manufacturers resulting in many different variations on the face piece, which resulted, of course, in slight differences in how the face pieces actually fit a person. Now, the earliest I have found uh, in a document stating the different face piece sizes was actually in a 1946 manual. Now, I didn't look into this as heavily as I probably should have, but they mentioned that the slight differences in manufacturers and face pieces resulted in either upsized or downsized mask. Now, with the downsized universal mask, what they would do is they would stamp uh, after the fact, act, after the whole molding process, they actually uh, manually stamped an S right next to the universal, which stood for small universal. Uh, same thing with the upsized, except it was stamped with an L for large universal. Same thing was done to the M4. Uh, <clears throat> so not only did you have the main sizes, you had size super small, size universal, and size large. You also had the sub sizes of the universal size. So uh, small universal, universal, and then large universal. If for whatever reason, you could not fit the many differences in the face pieces from these manufacturers, 
you could not fit in a size small universal, then you were given a super small. If you could not properly fit a size large universal, then you were given a large. And there you go. I'll see you guys later. I hope you guys enjoyed.